Hi, I'm Dr. Keith Forth, and today I'm going to talk about fluid in the middle ear. Many times I'm asked, how does fluid get into the middle ear? And the answer is always that it started with an infection. It could have been a viral infection, or it could have been a bacterial infection, or even a combination of both. If we think about the nose, whenever we get infected in our nose, like a common cold or a sinus infection, we produce fluid. That is the body's typical reaction to a virus or a bacteria is to produce a mucus type discharge to wash away that pathogen or that invader. Well the middle ear lining is no different than the nose lining in that sense that when there's an invader, a bacteria or a virus, it will produce fluid to try to wash that away. Typically that fluid is going to be drained out of the ear by the eustachian tube down, out, and into the back of the nose. But if this eustachian tube is swollen, or if it's not working because a child is young and hasn't properly developed yet, then that eustachian tube will not allow fluid to drain, and fluid then is stuck in the middle ear cavity. Now, typically, if you treat with an antibiotic, the bacteria that cause that middle ear fluid would usually respond to that antibiotic, but it can leave fluid behind in the middle ear. And oftentimes we can look and see that that fluid's not infected, it's just stuck there in the middle ear. Now here's the thing about middle ear fluid. As it sits there, over time, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. So if we looked at fluid that's in the ear for let's say one week, we would find that that fluid is very thin. And that thin fluid produces a little bit of muffling of the hearing. If that fluid can't drain down and out the eustachian tube and it sits there, let's say for two to four weeks, what we'll see is that fluid goes from thin to thick. And now, a very mild hearing loss becomes a moderate hearing loss because of this thick fluid. And unfortunately, we have the best chance of draining that fluid down and out the eustachian tube when it's thin. As it gets thicker, there's less and less chance because it's harder to drain a thicker fluid down a swollen and small eustachian tube. And in some cases, that fluid will sit there for a long time, let's say months. And when that fluid sits there for months, it turns into something that literally is the thickness of glue. So we start with thin fluid. We look at thin fluid. We can kind of tell what that looks like. Thick fluid comes next, it's more like syrup, and then finally glue, like that old glue when you had in elementary school that you had to squeeze out of the bottle, it can get that thick. And when we get to the glue, it's not draining down through the eustachian tube, it's just not going to happen. So our best chance of draining it on our own through the eustachian tube is when it's thin, the longer it sits there, the thicker and thicker it gets. Now, why can't a child or an adult just leave the fluid and maybe it goes away on its own? Well, inside the middle ear, we have three hearing bones. We call them malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Those hearing bones were designed to live in an air-filled environment. And when the eardrum vibrates from the sound vibrations, those hearing bones vibrate. In fluid, those hearing bones can't vibrate properly, and so you get a hearing loss. For a small child, having months and months of hearing loss from fluid in the ear can affect their speech development, it can certainly affect their behavior, it can affect their balance, uh, development, walking, and that sort of thing. For an adult, middle ear fluid is just plain annoying. They know what a middle ear space is supposed to feel like, and they find it highly annoying to have their fluid stuck in their ear. Another reason we can't leave middle ear fluid indefinitely is those bones will resorb over time. And so what you tend to see is those bones begin to soften in the fluid. Typically they're very rigid and hard, but in a fluid environment they soften, and now if they're not rigid, they don't conduct the vibrations nearly as well, and you begin to get a hearing loss. Sometimes that loss of bony rigidity becomes permanent. In severe cases, fluid causes erosion of the bones, and that erosion will sometimes even cause the bones to separate and then you get a big conductive hearing loss because the bones are no longer connected and they can't transmit the vibrations into the inner ear and allow us to hear. 
So fluid in the middle ear is a problem. The longer it sits there, the harder it is for it to drain on its own. And the longer it sits there, the more risk of continued hearing loss in small children, speech problems, speech delay. Um, and in just about everybody, middle ear fluid sitting there can pose a risk of damage, absorption, or destruction of the hearing bones. I hope that was educational and thank you for listening.